Yo, yo, welcome to this next lesson, guys. Okay, so today we're going to be working like we did before with the support. We're going to be working on the clothing design that the tank is going to be wearing, okay? So the tank has to have, uh, like, defensive elements, okay? So to start, I'm going to be pointing out the key movement points that the character, this kind of character, has to have to develop our suit of armor from them, okay? There wouldn't be many, uh, but we have to keep in mind that they are designed to be defenders and attackers. So mainly we're going to focus on the shoulders and on the knees. And as I was saying earlier, helmets are going to be are going to be optional. OK. Not in real life, though. All right. Because wear your helmet when you're riding your bike. But with tanks. Helmets might lower the character's visibility, so it's whatever you want, really. All right, let's get started. And yeah, let's get started with the shoulder pads, okay? That are a part we can have maybe some more licensed, you know, in our imagination, as we can decorate them in a way that's a little bit more exaggerated. We have to keep in mind that they are armors that are heavier than others. And for this reason, the protection or the handicap that we might have is that mobility might be a little stunted because of them. Okay. Seeing as we're taking away mobility, we're going to have to add in defense. We're going to... It's essential for you and for your team. As you can see, the forearm and the shoulder pads are covered with this armor I've just created. But if you look carefully, the elbows are uncovered. Uh, so that these characters aren't entirely immobile. You can also maybe like design some gloves that are going to cover the character's hands. And maybe in the waist part, we should add in some kind of chain mail. You know, there's not some like, attacks from affecting our design too much. In my case, I'm going to give this guy like a belt that's going to be holding. So even more like a light metal. Uh, what we could say is the inferior part and the superior part that's composed by the chess piece. You know, for the for the chest. It's going to be kind of like a group of things as the tummy area is going to be covered. In the case of the medieval, you know, theme, we're going to see armors that are more, well, you know, depending on what we want to represent, we can add in maybe more detail in the armors, okay? We can say that it's conditioned by the social status that, that our character might have in the moment. It's not the same to have a tank armor that is of a noble status, you know, so to speak, uh, as we might find with a paladin that's fought in many wars that might have an armor that's incredibly good, you know? The design process uh, with armors is only limited by our own creativity and effort that you want to put into it when you're drawing, okay? So, as I'm going to recommend, and you're going to say that I'm being a bit annoying here, um, you have to decide whether you want to work with references, if maybe you see an armor that you might like more or less. Maybe this part here where the helmet goes could have impacted me in some way. I could try to develop some kind of concept from this reference. You know... I, I don't know. Um, things like this. It's not copying. It's drawing inspiration from things. 
it's just like that, you know. Uh, uh, practice and try to expand your creativity towards points that maybe references go to a second plane and your references are in your head. And yeah, it's just to help when you're when you're designing. Yeah, so as I was saying, well, metal gloves are something that I quite like. They look quite useful when we're designing a character in this style. Seeing as they use weapons that are quite sharp and dangerous. And, you know, they might be useful to have this accessor accessor accessory. Jesus, as they are in danger of chopping a finger off. Uh, you got to be careful with that. If we move on to the bottom part, uh, we have to remember the mobility points I was telling you about uh, that are also in the legs, all right? Keep in mind that the, the armor may be heavy and they may have less mobility. They do still need, you know, they need to move and they need to be able to bend their legs and be able to move around with ease. In this case, the armor, the metal armor I'm making is made up of like iron boots. So it's going to be quite difficult to move. Well, to move, to be honest. Obviously, if we're designing, we're, we're not going to create a light armor for our tank. All right. As we would have in like a support character like we did before with fabrics that are lighter or that might be a little useless in defense, you know? That wouldn't really help anybody. And a tank is that, is to help everybody. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the same armor structure on the right leg. And this will be a first suit design, okay? In this case, I'm, I'm not basing myself on the one on the left, but you can adapt the ones I'm doing right now to your own characters if you want. And in the case that you want to design an armor uh, like of a tank, well, he would have this as a reference, but on Pinterest, Tumblr, or, you know, sites like these, you can straight up type in armor in a search bar and you'll get a ton, like a ton of images that might be inspiring to you, okay? I like the cape uh, because it gives that kind of like an aura of power or of someone who is kind of well known on the battlefield or maybe like, like their royalty, just mother knoweth you weareth her drapes kind of feel, you know? In this case, we're going to add in more protection to the neck, uh, the most vital area. And I'm going to start the armor in this way. Remember that the shoulders and the knees and the heads are the most important parts within the designs of these kinds of characters, okay? In this case, maybe what I would want to do is make a kind of armor that's lightly more curved or softened instead of having those sharp points. Uh, yeah, and with the shoulder pads, I'm quite used to putting in quite a lot of emphasis when I'm decorating and all that. This is because it gives you quite a few more options to expand a, a little when you want to draw details that are a little bit more, you know, a little bit smaller. In the case we have here with this armor, I'm going to make a little belt for this guy. It might be good to think that also these characters might need to carry their sword or their tool on their belt. Maybe not. Uh, this is all about what you want to do. Um, yeah. 
I'm going to add this bell. And maybe this part here on the farms as well. I think I'm going to give the this armor. As I said before, it might be a bit more of a dangerous area, but we can't cover the elbows. Uh, it's 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 an area that's kind of key to moving your arm, like trying to move your arm without your elbow. Right? You can't do it. Comment if you can. Um, so again, let's apply these gloves so that they have protection on their hands from their weapons and from attacks from enemies and wasps. And yeah, we'll add in a brief extension of the shoulder pads. In the case of the chest plate, you can add in a series of lines that can be interpreted as a part of, you know, the creation of these armors, like the metal joints or the cuts that it might have. I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to repeat here the same aesthetic of the glove that we did on the other hand. Um, as you can see, this is all coming from our imagination. I'm just giving this voice. It's not nothing of this is from my imagination. It looks cool as hell. Looks rad, man. Yeah, so we're just trying to change the example we have on the left. I've tried to think about a series of things I've been saying, like the movement points, the armor's functionality. Even though it's heavy, it has to have a certain level of mobility. And then it's designed for protection, etc., etc., etc. All right, we're going to finish this placing a kind of complement an accessory to the suit around it, like I was saying before. Doesn't have to make much sense, to be honest. Uh, this is going to be like a kind of coat of a chain mail. It's quite a quick sketch, so don't worry. We're basically going to try and use this to imagine the end result we're looking for. And well, lastly, we're going to finish with the knees and the shoes. So yeah, it could look a little more like, you know, together with the rest of the design. And again, this metal shoe I was telling you about, it's going to be, it's going to give protection to the area at the movement point and on the feet. This will be the last part of the armor, so so we can finish it. Yeah, we don't really have to go much into this regarding the design here. We just have to, in the case that you you choose to design your character basing off of a tank, make sure you keep in mind the movement points and take all the references you think might, you know, be necessary to develop the image you want to create in the end. Okay, if you prefer to have more mobility, um, or maybe that everything is just a little more ornamental. I don't know. I this is all up to you. So yeah, we're going to finish this up, and the only thing left to discuss on this would be the weapons and the movement in the action lines like we did with the support character. And, well, maybe something else on the way, but we'll leave that for further on. Check out that cliffhanger, man. All right, I hope this lesson has helped you guys. And uh, if you have any doubts whatsoever, you know there's no problem in asking me whatever you think you need to in the forum. Um, I'll see you guys later. Bye. I love you.